So what I plan on doing in this video is to take an existing project in Logic, something that I've had placed, and then modify it to make a new queue uh, so that I'm working quicker uh, and delivering more content to the libraries uh, in less time. So some folks have asked me, how do you crank out so much music in so little time, even if I have a day job and family and things like that. Um, I like templates. I like taking stuff that has been successful and then reworking it. And it's really not that difficult once you find something that's good. If it's been placed uh, or forwarded, that means that the mix is fine, the instrumentation is fine, the style is fine. Um, so I've got a track here that it was placed on cold case files, kind of a, a slow building tension drama drone, you know, call it what you will. You'll hear it in a minute. I'm going to take this track that was placed and then I'm going to modify it and create a brand new queue to send to that library because they need more of it. So let's go ahead and listen to what we have. I've already done the save as, but this is the track before I edit it. So let's go ahead and play it. It's about a oh, minute and a half long, I think. minute 40 seconds long so very very simple stuff you can see from the uh, placement of the sections I've got here it's there's not a lot going on at the busiest this has what s seven or eight things going on but it's, it's very very minimal so uh, the first thing it did was I, I took that other track and did a save as put it in its own directory and gave it a new name uh, so my name is here with the name of the, the BPM and the key and then uh, that's kind of how I name things and then now we can just take this and uh, make it new. So right now it's everything's in A minor. So let's look at all the tracks that are harmonic. They're not percussion, uh, so they're tonal. So let's see, I've got my piano. Um, let's see, this here right there, my, my pad, some strings. There's the piano again, my bass, another pad. That's rhythmic, uplifters are rhythmic. Symbols are, are rhythmic, bass drum is fine, timpani rolls, I gotta move those a bit. Okay, so all these tracks here are harmonic in nature and I wanna change the key, so I'm gonna double click. That opens up my editor on the bottom, and again, I'm using Logic, uh, this is 10.3. Uh, the upgrade's pretty cool, it looks slightly different, you can see uh, the interface is slightly more generic. Uh, so I've got all my melodic uh, harmonic uh, tracks selected, so I click once in my piano roll, Option A, or Command A to select all. I'm just gonna drop them down two beats. I'm sorry, two, two uh, steps. One, two. So now my whole track is suddenly in G minor instead of A minor. Let's play it right here. See, make sure I got them all right. Did I miss something? I'm not sure. Let's try it again from the beginning. Sounds fine. Oh, maybe the arpeggiator is an issue. Let's see, let's see there. Ah, see what I did? I didn't change my pluck. 
That's why it sounds weird. Babe, I'm gonna keep it in this video because I wanna show exactly what happens when you do this, which doesn't sound quite right. So I thought the pluck was rhythmic. Uh, so I'm gonna take that. As you can see here, that's still an A. So I've got just that pluck selected. Click once in my piano roll, Command A to select all, drop it down two steps. Now let's try it from the beginning of the melody. <sighs> that sounds much better, doesn't it? Okay, we're good there. I'll check in the last larger section. Yep, we're good. Okay, you get the point. Take all the melodic, harmonic, non-percussion tracks and change the key. And I just do that to give some sonic variety to the library. Uh, you don't have to, by any means, if you change it enough. So now let's start changing things here. Uh, and I'll usually go in chronological order. Um, so up first is my Distant Memories Bell Pad. Uh, this is an Omnisphere patch. So let's see what we got here. It starts kind of mellow. Just goes up an octave and I add a fifth in a minute. You know, that's pretty straightforward. Why don't I start this thing out with fifths instead? And then add, I'm going to add the third at the top instead. So. So it's already different sonically. It's, instead of going from just a single drone on the root uh, and then adding an octave later, I came in with the, the, the G and the D. Gives me that open fifth sound, and then added the minor third to give it the sonic quality of that minor key. Okay, so that's good and unique now. Um, but that's just the first four bars. Now, what have I got going on in the second part here? Let's uh, try this guy. Sorry, just this one, not the whole thing. Okay, pretty straightforward. I like the drone constant, keeping that drone going. And remember, you don't want to change it much, uh, too much from the original because that's what got forwarded or, or placed. So uh, what do we got here? G, fifth, the root again. I'm gonna drop that down to the minor third. Maybe put it down lower. Maybe a cluster. Let's try that. Let's see what that sounds like now. You know, I didn't, I don't, ah, that's right. I had some stuff higher up. I, no, I thought I heard something up there. Let's spread this sucker out, spread it out a bit. Okay, so I don't, first, I don't like these uh, whole steps or these half steps at the lower range. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to put that up the top. It'll sound better that way. Okay, so I've got my G minor chord here. I'm adding the, the ninth in there, the A, and then I'm going to go to the C minor chord, which is I'm going to from one to four. So let's see what that sounds like now. And that's a little too open for me. I want to have a little more tightness as far as the uh, density goes. So what we've got basically here is I've gone uh, G minor with the next with it with a ninth added to the C minor, which is the four chord, back to G, and then uh, kept the G, but I just changed the inversion. So I, I, inversion means taking the notes of the triad and then just moving them in different places. So let's see what it sounds like now again. So it's its own thing now. It's different entirely than it was before. Um, so now, uh, I want. Now that I've got this one section here done, 
I'm going to just uh, option drag it and put it on top of the other sections. Okay, so that's done. So now that I know that it's done, I'm going to change the color of it. Uh, option C to get my color palette, and I'm going to change it to something that's not there. Let's change it to this, uh, this uh, dark purple at the far right bottom. Okay, now let's change it something. Let's change it to yellow so I know that I can see it, that it's done. Okay, so boom, that's done. My Timothy Rose, I'm going to change a different color. Call me OCD, that's fine. Boom, that's a different color now. Okay, so now we know that yellow is done. So we got the Plux here, that's my arpeggio stuff that I forgot to change earlier, and then my Dream Celeste. So let's, what did I do in that last time? Yeah, so what I did last time, I took the chords that I had from my pad, and then I just put it in an arpeggiator. So that's a real easy finish. So I can get rid of these guys here. And I may change it later. Let's get rid of those. And I'm going to take the memory, the uh, distant memories, the uh, pad that I did. Control, drag it up there. I'm going to rename it to pluck, because that's what it is. Or maybe I'll call it arpeg. OK, so now that's there. Um, what does that sound like? Let's go back to what? just one of these guys. Now, what would that sound like up on octave? It might be too abrasive. Oops, sorry. Dang it, I want to do that. Okay, let's try this here. Take all this, right click, up, up 12 semitones. Now let's try it. I might do that later. I think it's too bright early in the piece. So, Command Z to undo, boom. So now I've got my arpeggios done, I've got my pads done. Let's take a look at the piano. What was I doing the piano? Okay, that's my melody. Very simple. May not be very compelling, but it's very simple. Okay, and then what happens the next two times? Same thing, but it's up an octave, it looks like. Is it? Yep. Up there, you can hear a little bit more of the bell on the high end. So which means I just change this once, and then move it over twice, put those two up an octave. So, let's change my melody. Um, fading. Nah, I don't like those still here. Sometimes Logic does that, where you change views and it doesn't capture everything. That's it. That's better now. It's just that one. So, and this is really simple. And I'll keep it piano mute. Piano mode. Piano roll mode. Where am I at here? Okay, so. A little larger here. G minor, that's the D, that's the fifth. In any key, the fifth really doesn't have much sonic identifying quality. When you play a fifth, you can't tell is it major, is it minor, is it sus? So it's kind of open. Um, I'd like something a little more. I don't know, let's, let's start with my minor third. I'm going to change the rhythm a little bit. So now instead of quarter, quarter, half, I've got. that again what's fifth okay so now I change the notes and I change the rhythm slightly I want to keep the sparseness so I'm not going to change anything else there and then we had something else here I'll keep that same rhythmic motive so let's take that now what did I do here remember I had I was in the G minor for two C minor for two and the G minor for the rest. So, what do we got here? That'll work, I think. Is that'll, that'll be the, the ninth of the the four chord boom, and then G minor, C minor. There's the third in the C minor, and then back to here. Ooh, that's not going to work because it's the fourth. Unless I want to do, I can keep that raised and then put it down in the last. Okay, let's try that. Let's see what we got here.
It sounds really boring, but don't forget there's arpeggios and stuff going on behind it. So now let's see what we got. We got my piano's been changed, my melody. Um, is there anything going on in my piano yet here? It doesn't look like it. It's, no, it's, I gotta, why is there such a long space there? I might have pushed record too early, so let's get rid of that. Move this over here. That's where my piano plays. So that gives me some space. Oh, so now that it looks even simpler. So I've got these three things going on. That is it. And uh, I'm going to take this piano melody. I like it. I'm going to overwrite my old one. Overwrite my old one again. And I'm going to rename this melody since I know what it is now. So rename melody. And uh, since I've already done my save as once, uh, calling this one running out of time, I'm going to do a quick save. Always save your work because you don't know when stuff's going to crash. So now I've changed the only three things that are here. So let's see what it sounds like. So I didn't really like that that's raised that fourth that I said I was going to do in the in the, in the second uh, in, in the in the the second G minor time. So we got G minor here. Let's do this here. So there's G minor for that C minor and then G minor G minor. So uh, I'm going to highlight that section here and then go back to my melody. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. again okay so I just change the melody a bit to go back in the key and put that melody in the G minor centric uh, sounding area so Once again, I'm going to go back and copy that, copy it here, copy it here, make all these yellow so I know I'm done. And then remember the second time and third time, I put them up an octave. So let's take that, select all, right click, up 12 semitones, boom. So my clicks, uh, what do we got? Let's see what it sounds like here. That sounds fine. No reason to change that. It's not really identifying. Um, my bass drum, I don't really remember hearing that. Do I have it muted? Uh, let's take a peek here. Yeah, it looks, uh, where are we at here? Bass drum. Uh, look at that. I must have taken it off. Let's uh, go to my mixer here. Yeah, I'll close this window. I don't need this one. So, where's my bass drum again? Right here? No, it's these two guys here. So let's bring it back up for a second. I might have, I must, must have had it muted for a reason. Hmm, I think the conflict with the timpani is why I pulled it out. The only way to check is let's go back to my original file. I go look at here. Was it? It was uh, this one right here. There it is. So it was in there, the original. Okay, now we know. So let's us go back in. I'm gonna make sure that's in there. and see. I 
just gonna take that out. Let's see if that's it. What is happening? Something on the down beat. So now, when I have a conflict, you'll hear this little ba like a stutter. It's not there. When I start on the beat, it's not there. Let's start two beats earlier. to select all and do a little search. So my cursor is right on the downbeat. I've got all my tracks selected. Is there anything I see that might be causing a conflict? Yeah, that's the one. There's a little hit afterwards. Now let's try it. It's gone. So this Now, do I have a timpani hit on the downbeat, though, to make sure that it's there? I've got timpani hit. Yep, there it is. So the top track here is my roll. I had my roll over the fir over the beat, and then the hit, was. that's what it was. So the roll was continuing just past the beat. That's the kind of little attention to detail that some of the veterans uh, have taught me. It's those little things that make a difference. I've been returned for the little things like that. So uh, that makes a huge difference. So let's hear it again. Up oh, and in the old system overloaded. Let's get rid of that real quick. Save everything. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we have. Uh, let's see. I'm guessing we're gonna keep. Is there anything else going on in the timpani there besides that? Let's see what we got here. Boom. Make that smaller so I can see. I'll listen to stuff later on. Those are straightforward. Boom, boom. So you gotta keep those. Change them to be a little slower. Bum, bum. Like that. Okay, that works. And then the overload. Uh, I'm using a MacBook Air with 8 gig of RAM. And I think it's why it's overloading is it never overloads for music. It's because I'm doing audio video recording at the same time. Uh, it was doing this earlier during a Skype session. So uh, I think that's what the deal is. So my apologies for that. But so far, we're still able to continue. So as you can see, changing all the things uh, earlier on into the new key, everything that, that, that's playing still from the leftover original cue still sounds fine. I just have strings. And those are just long notes, quiet long notes. Just a root. Nothing wrong with that. Keep that in there. I think I got enough sonic difference right now. That's obviously a synth uh, string, not a real string. That's uh, from Lethal, I believe. And now the last section is really, I probably have a few things to change and then we're done. So um, let's first, let's go to damage because that's easy. If you, I'm using, I use a ton of native instrument stuff. I love uh, Contact uh, Ultimate. It's got everything. Uh, I'm still on version 10. I have no need to go to 11. I'm still just barely scratching the surface on 10. So damage is amazing. You hear it all the time in movies and, and uh, TV. So it's just got so much stuff in it. So changing this is super easy. So here's what the current rhythmic patch is in the bottom. Now watch how hard. This is years of music study on how to change that. Go up a step. Because of this particular damage uh, patch, all the keys have different rhythms. So that just changes completely from this. Metallic 16th note feel. It's got some delay on it, so let's just find something random. Too brittle. That might work. It's got a. Oh, it's got a sticks on the wood. What was the original again? Maybe I don't want to go too far. It's like. It's got a different rhythm feel to it. I like this one. Different but similar. Okay. Then what do I got going over here? 
what I'm doing is I'm just adding, in damage, it's just rhythms. I'm adding more to uh, give me some uh, more increased tension in the last four bars or so. So we got. So it's the same, so let's just. That's different enough. Sure, boom. So I just basically raised everything up a whole step or two semitones. So that it changes my percussion. So damage be done. Uh, change that color in that sucker. And done. Okay. Um, what happened to the pedal pad? Oh, I changed. I didn't touch these strings yet. These strings I said were fine, so we're gonna call those done. Uh, I said the bass drum was cool. That was fine. Um, I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that the same too. Because one of my hopes, and this is still an unproven theory, is that. I want things to hopefully establish a sound or a feel for the show that it got placed in. And uh, uh, if they like it, and they, maybe they'll start using that. Yeah, I want to get that, that, that Paul music again. So um, let's get some more of that stuff. And kind of sets us a regular tone. So you hear the same kind of concepts, for the same types of scenes in the show. So um, timpani, we said we kept the same. I just changed the, rhythmics, the rhythm slightly. So make that sucker yellow. Bing, bang, boom. What do I got left? Um, the clicks I kept. It was yellow. And I'm a visual person, so it helps me a ton. Um, we've got this bell pad. Was that the same as I was doing? Let's see what this sounds like. It's like a bell pad to me. Oh, it's strings. I had copied the bell pad down. It's basically double this here. So which tells me this is the bell pad right here. And so what I did to add layers, I had the bell pad, and I just added some strings to thicken this up the second time, which tells me I can just drag these two sections here down to here to uh, make it sound the same. So let's do that. Boom, boom. Copy, copy. Done. Now I just got to check the octave, because sometimes when you, when you copy things, it might be too high, too low. So let's try playing here. It's going to start timing on me again. Boom, there it goes. Man, I hate when it does that. Save real quick. Let's just try the string patch. Yeah, that dissonance. I don't think I want that because I got that going on somewhere else. So, stop it. So, I'll take these two patches here. Gonna take that A, that ninth out of there, out of there, out of there. Good. So, that's done. I'll keep it otherwise. Um, let me put this one up on octave. Doll, right click, up an octave. Oh, that's killing me. My apologies. Save. I'm gonna save until I'm gonna quit and come back in. Bye bye. Taking a while, it might error out. I've been getting an error message on exit relating to Ableton plugin. I'm not sure why. So let's see, let's see how long it's taking me to time out. I mean, to, to quit. So finally, that's gone. So let's bring it on back. So, yep, boom. While using the Ableton Live Engine plugin. Oh, was I using that? I don't think I was, but I'll have to go disable that. Um, coming back into Logic. And I'm not going to edit this video. I just want to show how the workflow goes. Um, how to adapt on the fly. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so that's my new thing. Let's go back to my recent. Running out of time. Close this. I'll be cool, otherwise I'll have to reboot. And in that case, I'll have to stop the video. It's loading. It's loading, loading, loading. Let's see that, there you go, see it's loading. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, here we are, so we're back. And that's why you save often. Um, so, let's see what we got here. Let's start with the strings. I think I just put them up an octave. Sounds better to me. Yep, there's that crack. Let's go time out again. Okay, so that's good. I think I'm happy with the strings. What's going on in the piano here? Hmm. Just octaves. I may change it up. It's just happening that one time. Um, let, me, let me get rid of some stuff that I'm not using here, and maybe so I can. Uh, uh, 
leading tracks I'm not using right now. Anything there? We got just a little uplifter boom at the end. What's this? Swings. Orchestral sustain. I do not need you. Done. And what's this? Childish noise bell. Cool. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. So now we're nice and simple. Saving again. So the question was, do we edit the piano or not? That's not really a good piano sound, but it's kind of you know buried in the mix. So let's see, press again. That's, I don't like that how that was hitting kind of harder, so we'll take the velocity down a bit there. octaves so let's just change something here let's uh tell you what we're gonna switch this we're gonna make that the, make that the downbeat and let's make it go i'll do some fifths so now we got this So I'm gonna I'm gonna change these lengths so they're all the same. So I highlight them all, holding down uh, Option and Shift at the same time, and I'm grabbing one. Let me make it a little bigger so you can see it better. I'm grabbing one. See how they're all changing? I want to make them the exact same length. That's gonna smooth it out as though I was holding down the same sustain pedal a little better. Is that a high note I just heard? Oh, that's everything. Got it. Okay. So now the piano's done. Make that sucker yellow. We can call it gold for the the goodness of gold. Okay, so last thing I got besides these audio files, and what's this little guy here? This is, looks like a little chord of some sort. Is that muted? What's this right here? Did I just lose my audio? I think I may have that. Back. Why am I not getting anything out of my lethal synth here? If you haven't checked out lethal, it's a really nice little synth. Um, why is it not working now? It's energized one. Maybe I haven't muted. Let's go to the uh, mixer real quick and see. It's the very first track. It's right there. It's really small. Can I even hear it? Let's see. Oh, and that's what it was. I think I had some uh, animation. That's the problem. See, right there? I'm doing a swell at the end for the kind of stinger thing. That's why it was so dang soft. See, got to learn all this stuff. I'm still learning so much. Okay. Uh, boom. So. <laughs> Good. So now that's that. That's that. Uh, the bass. The bass can be very fairly identifying in any track. I mean, that happens to pop music. It happens to lots of other things. So let's listen to my bass track and see what we got. It's just a fretless bass. I think doing octaves. Let's see. So I'm adding some pulsing to it, kind of going along with the damage. slightly so I just add something here but there's my rhythm right now so now it's this instead of the first version.
So copy these guys here and then place it right in the downbeat. And since it's a full measure, I can just go paste, 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 paste. Now let's see what's happening here. Um, let's paste it again. It has some overlaps. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, cut that note, put it right there. I guess I'll keep the pulsing at the end the same. So that we got some sonic variation. We're good to go. Uh, color are you yellow? And now the only things left that are unique, I've got some samples, some loops. Uh, what do we got here? This is a reverse symbol. That's just a swell. That's going to be um, editor. Why is it there, though? I don't, I don't know. They have the same thing at the end. And then this uplift. What does this sound like? Let's make this a little smaller so you can see it. This is my big stinger ending. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and then a boom. So I'll change, maybe I'll change the boom out. So I'll go to my loop library, say boom, -er. and these are from, uh, I think cymatics, I'm not sure. What do I got in there now? I've got this. Like a single crash, symbol crash, boom. That's different. Let's go with that one. So, I'm just gonna drag that on top of my former one. Close the loop library out. Now let's see, do I have a fade built in? Notice it's a lot quieter because uh, the overall mix of this thing was low. So let's go to my automation. Do I have a master track fade? Um, I do not. So I may need to add one. I could just do it. Oh, it drops down real quick. I have, I have fade automation on the individual track, which is right there. See, so I need to change that. So. had was the boom was kind of hot before and I was using the same track so I'm going to raise that up a bit just put it back where it was no 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 cancel that perfect I like that okay no need for any other automation so let's get out of that um and let's just look at automation real quick, see what I did in here. Let's make it all fit. Uh, can I make it all fit? There's not a whole lot. Um, it's not a lot going on to begin with. Uh, I guess I was messing around with the pluck, but I don't need that anymore. Undo that. So that was it. Minus 18, just so I don't mess. Remember last time, boom. Get rid of that there. Only thing I have here is that swell at the end. And there is... Really nothing else. I got no. This is a very simple drone track from an automation perspective. Um, get out of that, and you can see we're done. Uh, I don't see a clock as far as how long that took, but now I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce this sucker so we can listen to it. Save first, and then bounce. And I'll just do a quick MP3 right now. We're gonna put that bada, bada, boom. Um, put it on my old desktop for now. Running out of time. And it's a G minor, not A minor. Save. Bouncing. And I'm all out of coffee. I will have to get some more decaf. It's nighttime. I drink. I drink a lot of coffee. Usually just regular in the morning and then decaf the rest of the day. It's more of a, a habit than a, a need, I swear to God.
and done. So now, now I can play that track. And let's give listen to the whole thing. something at the very end that's why you play the whole damn thing so i did not see that screen i should have caught that i did not change the chord i figured out the chord i was worried about the automation and why i couldn't hear it it was low volume that swells up but i did not change the chord so that was an a minor chord which you know in some places would work awesome over a g minor but it was a little too distant for what i wanted to do so let's go back and change it like i was supposed to i mean in score mode it's the very end here. Uh, let's just get it right here. Come back, not here, here, right here. There it is. So that's just, it's just basic chord. So. One, five, one. That's about as try it as it gets. So I went from uh, A minor to G minor, so grab it all. Down. So now we're good. Yeah, on the bottom. Look at that. That's sonically a little bit different than before. Um, boom, so that's done. So let's turn that sucker yellow since we did it this time. Boom. And there we have a new cue. Now, I probably would have taken me half the time because I wasn't explaining, I wouldn't be explaining everything and I wouldn't be suffering my uh, timeout problems that I'm having doing video uh, and playing stuff at the same time. Um, honey, can I get a bigger Mac? No, I'm, I can't do that. Not right now. Um, so I think we're good. I'm going to save it, and then we're done. So that's just one uh, way to do things, to crank out work in less time. Because the original writing of this track took me a little longer because I had to mess around and jack around with stuff and create the original track. But once it's set, you've got the parts, you just change the notes, change the key maybe, uh, change some rhythmic foundational elements, um, but don't change the form. Notice how I didn't change anything um, as far as uh, adding or removing pieces because, again, this was forwarded and placed, so don't want to mess with that too much. Uh, I tried to change the things that were sonically unique so that uh, you won't think, hey, that sounds kind of like that other one. So let me see. Uh, let's get, can I pull up the other one, the original, and then we'll do this here. So, 
That was inner persistence. So let's do a little sample of that. Let's do inner persistence, full mix. Let's play that. Let's go back to the middle here. that it's in a persistence then let's hear the new track where did it go I just had it um, that's different similar but slower Persistence again. have a new queue. Um, now I've got to crank out probably two or three more of these tonight and call it a night. So I hope that was useful. Uh, I know I tend to speak quickly at times. Hopefully you can understand things. Uh, but hit me up at paul at yopaulymusic.com if you got any questions or hit me up in the taxi forums or on YouTube. Not YouTube. Yeah, no, Facebook. Um, I'll eventually get a YouTube channel. But um, And this was, you know, targeting folks that are new to queues and maybe new to their DAWs and, and just uh, wanting to figure out how to work a little faster and how to use uh, existing projects that were successful to, uh, to get more work done. All right. Well, again, hope that was useful, and we'll see you around.